So I know a lot of you have been asking to make a install video for installing an engine in a C5 Corvette. Uh, the removal video did pretty well, so I wanted to do a follow-up. Got my motor back. Uh, so what you're going to want to do before you even install anything, and a lot of this may sound obvious, install your engine arms, uh, oil pan has to be on, the front half of the bell housing has to be on and make sure you have your bolts ready for the other half of the bell house or where the torque tube meets the bell housing. Make sure you have your clutch on with your pilot bearing and that should be pretty much it engine wise. And then if you have, you don't want to put your starter on because once it's actually in the car, it's a little bit hard to do that. Uh, what else? If you have any oil cooler adapters, put those on. And then there is the crank position sensor that sits behind the starter too. You're gonna wanna put that on. Make sure all your freeze plugs are in. Make sure any sort of caps that go on the motor because once it's in, it's gonna be pretty hard to get to. I have a engine lift cover and what I'm gonna end up doing is using my load lever to change the pitch of the motor itself to get this uh, exactly lined up with the torque tube splines. Coming in here, we have subframe is in the car still. It's not actually lowered off of the car. It's still attached. You can see down here that I've separated the entire cradle to the point where it's on pretty much the last thread uh, and you can see there's a little bit of a gap here between the body and the subframe just to lower that subframe down a little bit so you have clearance between the batwing oil pan and getting on the splines of the torque tube. You want to get your engine mounts in place. Uh, mine are loose so there's a little bit of wiggle room so we can get the engine mounted on there properly. Uh, what else? My steering rack was already out, but if you are installing the damper and your steering rack is already in, it's not gonna clear. So keep that in mind. And then the next step is you wanna make sure that you have a jack or something underneath the torque tube. And you wanna actually get that torque tube up as high as you possibly can. So see where that transmission tunnel is? You wanna get that torque tube to the point where it's almost hitting or as high as you possibly can on the trans tunnel. That'll allow the angle of this to be sitting upright so you can slide the motor onto the splines properly and then finally rest it down onto the, uh, the engine mounts there. So again, it's, it's kind of just slipping it in from the top and then setting it down. So the mistake I made when I was removing it or why it was so hard is the angle of the torque tube was sitting too low and I was just hitting the motor on the actual subframe because the front of the oil pan was hitting here. So in order to alleviate that, just get that as high as possible and you should be good. I'll try to actually film us putting the motor in, but I actually need a longer boom. So we're gonna get a completely different uh, engine hoist that's a little bit higher ton rated. I think his is like a two or three ton and they have longer boom extensions. The issue I was running into, and actually I cut a little slit on here, I was trying to remove the motor from the side because you, you definitely can't do it from the front with that short boom because you'd be hitting this. So in order to give me the best chance possible, I did it from the side. The issue was my boom was just not long enough and I was kind of fighting with it to just have barely enough reach to reach over and grab that motor. So hoping a longer boom, a bigger uh, engine hoist will help out quite substantially. Engine is in, of course I didn't film it as usual. Um, some tips here. What you wanna do is Lower the front subframe bolts as much as you can and then completely take off the rear ones. That way the subframe will just tilt back and you'll have clearance for the oil pan and to be able to shove the motor backwards. Um, my buddy was underneath kind of like manhandling the torque tube and getting it lined up with the splines uh, underneath there. So 
that helped a lot. But if you're the only one there trying to do this, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> um, you would probably need to get like a jack or something and just keep moving a jack up and down to get the splines to line up. So the, uh, the engine mounts we kept off completely until we were ready to set it down on the subframe because those got in the way too when we were trying to slide it back. But we had just enough room to slide those mounts in between the arms and then get that to sit down in there. And then finally the motor just rested on the subframe and that's pretty much it. Um, but yeah, it's just the, the key is to get that, you know, the torque tube lined up with the bell housing and clutch alignment and everything to get it to slide forward and then you're, you're good to go. So let me know if you guys have any questions. Um, I had a lot of people reach out to do an install video since a lot of people watch the removal video. So let me know.